Fine six is going beyond pride. Just this year, there have been more bills targeting the existence of transgender children introduced than the last eight years combined. That's according to the database translegislation.org. So the parents who support their trans children say they have felt like the states they live in are actually coming after them now. So some are seeking refuge right here in Oregon. Our Brandon Thompson speaking to a mother who feared that she was going to have her daughter taken away from her when she lived down in Texas? Yeah, so they leave Texas before they were told by lawyers that they wouldn't be allowed to. Texas Governor Greg Abbott was sending child welfare agents to investigate parents who were providing gender-affirming care for their children. That order was struck down, but not before Karen, her son, her husband, and her transgender daughter made the decision to flee their home, seeking safety in Oregon. When you ask Karen's transgender daughter about her favorite things. I really like the scenery, the nature, big trees. You find her appreciation for the natural world around her. So I think it's really cool what this place can do with like nature. I think it's really satisfying. And We're not using her name to protect her privacy. 11 years old now, Karen's daughter knew she was trans when she was three years old. She didn't know the word, but she knew how she felt. Karen didn't accept it at first. I shot that down real quick mm. and I went, you know, you're not a girl, you're a boy. And, you know, don't, you don't, don't worry. You don't have to be a girl to like girl things. I just saw her sort of disappearing into herself. Mm. And she came to me in the kitchen again. She was six years old and she said, Mom, I'm a girl. And I repeated the same thing. You don't have to be a girl to like girl things. And she went, I know, but I'm a girl who likes girl things. Mm -hmm. And she just held my gaze. And I, I knew that I knew that she meant it and that I didn't understand, uh, but that it was my job to find out because I'm her mom. Her love for her child turned into advocacy. Protect trans kids! Protect trans kids! In 2021, Karen had joined other people rallying at the state capitol in Austin against the slate of bills targeting health care for transgender children, like puberty blockers, or even seeking therapy from a behavioral health provider. Puberty is an awkward experience for all of us, but for transgender youth, it is traumatic. The bills, the attacks were relentless. Attacks on their health care, trying to go after the, the providers of, of care that has been deemed best practice medical care by literally every major medical association. They were successful that year. Then in 2022, Governor Greg Abbott, facing primary challenges to his reelection, ordered the state's Department of Family and Protective Services to investigate providing gender affirming care as child abuse and investigating the parents who provide it to their children. I would say, well, I'm going to stay here and fight until they start trying to take my kids away. And I would say it kind of this like, oh, well, you know, that's never going to happen. But then it did. And so we were advised to to leave. Mm -hmm. to leave before we couldn't leave. Karen was not seeking that care for her daughter at the time. She was told by lawyers that her public advocacy made her a target. She remembers the children of family friends who were approached at school by protective service agents. She had to train both of her children about what to do if that happened to them. How do we, how do we talk to our children about the fact that strangers might pull them out of their classroom and we had to talk about um, here is the little card that you will carry around with you in your pocket and in your backpack. And if CPS shows up at your school, you show them the card that says, I do not consent to speak with you. This is my lawyer's information. He moved because a lot of the politics in Austin were not that great. A lot of capital stuff. Yeah, it was pretty bad. A year ago, Karen feared not only for her daughter's safety, but the effect of the politics in Texas was having on her. Her daughter was having panic attacks, and one day in the car, the severity of her stress became clear. Karen asked her daughter if she wanted to record a statement for a rally in front of the Texas governor's mansion. And I asked, do you want to say anything? And she was very quiet. She was sitting behind me. And then I just heard her little 10-year-old voice ask, am I going to die? It seemed to come from out of nowhere, except no, like that sort of question must be on her mind constantly. 
hearing about all of this hate, all these lies about her. And so I, I pulled over and I asked, you know, why would you say that? Of course you're not going to die. She looked at me and said, because everybody here hates me. Mm. Um, and I just knew, like, I can't, I can't ask her to grow up in a, a, a place like this. The order from Greg Abbott to investigate families of trans kids was struck down by a court last summer, just as Karen's family was fleeing the state. Karen and her husband are Texas natives. Her husband's employer saw the stress the political battle was having on their family and helped accommodate their move to Portland. When we got into Oregon, we went downtown, and then there was this like massive pride festival, and I thought it was really cool. What did you think about seeing the Pride Festival? I feel I felt like I'm in the right place. This is where I live now, and I don't um, plan on moving ever again. <laughs> Karen sees a freedom in her daughter that she did not see when they lived in Texas. A freedom from worry, a freedom of thought, and a freedom to be a kid again. I remember I asked her before she started school, I'm like, are you going to tell your classmates that you're trans? And she went, Probably. I mean, it's safe, right? Oh. And I went, yeah, I think so. And it's, she just, she feels supported. When I first um, got to Tamani school, yeah, I was sure I was really nervous, but I knew that there was another trans um, kid in my class um, because when I visited, um, like, I, um, everyone told me that this other person's trans just so I could know. And I was like, cool. And then I kind of felt like more safe and, but, and then I adjusted to my school more because everyone was so nice and so friendly. And yes, it was very beautiful. And so I spent most time playing. Not playing in politics, but playing at school, just like an 11 year old kid should do. Karen feels relief in Oregon, finally being able to testify on legislation that she supports and supports her trans daughter. But during testimony in Salem earlier this spring, she heard the similar false arguments made here that she heard in Texas. And she hopes Oregonians remain vigilant in protecting equal rights for transgender people like her daughter. And then you got to talk to the daughter as we just heard. And for her to go from having that anxiety that she felt in Texas, was it hard to imagine because she seemed so confident? confident? Yeah. yeah, Karen feels like her daughter has life again, like her daughter is happy again and free to think about the things that kids are supposed to do and not about political battle. Yeah. All right. Brandon, thank you so much. Yeah.